So there are three main criteria to have a buffer solution. A good buffer solution should have criteria number one. You must have a weak acid and a weak base. They are conjugated to one another. A few examples here. So all these things are a possible buffer combinations. The basic thing for this is actually it must contain the conjugated acid base pair. First one is actually HF. That's actually your weak acid. And a NAF. Every time you see NAF, you should know that it is it is a salt. And the things that is actually relevant to your pH is F minus. Train yourself so you have the eye to see this. Then you can see that HF and F minus they are conjugated acid base pair. Therefore, you can have a buffer solution. The same thing for this, right? HCN is a weak acid, and the NACN is equivalent to CM minus. So you have HCN, CM minus, they are conjugated acid base pairs. Every time you see a conjugated acid base pairs, the word that should pop up in your mind is buffer solution, buffer solution, buffer solution. Okay? So you can do this practice here. One thing that's a little bit special that students will actually miss is that the amine group, for example, this guy, NH4Cl, you should see this as NH4 plus Cl minus is a conjugate base of a strong acid, right? So this guy did not actually contribute to your pH. So the remaining part, which is actually NH4 plus, is a conjugate acid of a weak base. OK, so that is the acid you have. And then NH3, that is the weak base you have. This is also a conjugated acid-base pair. This is actually a good combination for a buffer as well. Sometimes you will see it doesn't really write out as NH4 plus. It writes us these things like CH3, NH3. So what this means is actually, if you look at this structure, it means your nitrogen attached to four hydrogen. Often in your homework, you will see something like this, like CH3, CH3, CH3. This is actually the same as your NH4 plus. Okay, sometimes the nitrogen doesn't have to be always attached to a hydrogen, okay? You can attach to a alkyl chain, and then you can attach to like one alkyl chain, two alkyl chain, or three alkyl chain. But the things you should see is actually all these things is actually belongs to so-called the amine base. Every time you see this, a chemical formula that give you an attached to maybe four different atoms, okay, with a plus, okay? That is actually a weak acid. All right, so let's actually the first criteria and you really need to have you really need to actually have a conjugated acid base pair. Criteria number two, this weak acid weak base. Let's actually have more or less the same amount. If there is so much acid than the base, then you won't actually make a good buffer because it means actually if there's so much weak acid, then it has a good ability to actually buffer strong base. It doesn't actually going to be effective for your strong acid. So the criteria number two is actually your acid base pair should actually have approximately equal amount. Criteria number three is actually they must be in substantial amounts. In other words, both species need to be in high concentration. When I say high concentration, typically is in the millimolar concentration. Right now we're going to go to the most important equation of this chapter. Every time you see you have a buffer solution, this will be the go-to equation you want to use. For example, today you have this weak acid and it's going to dissolve inside your water, okay? And then you have a substantial amount of weak base coexisting inside your solution. 
then you know your Ka was defined as H plus concentration times A minus concentration over HA concentration, right? So once you have these definitions, I can actually rearrange this equation so that I can actually express my proton concentration is going to equals to, I'm going to move these two to the left, on the top will be the Ka times your HA concentration. At the bottom will be your A minus. Then I want to actually convert this one into my pH. So we know the pH is simply a negative log of photon concentration. So I'm going to take the negative log on both sides. So that I have negative log H plus. It's going to equal to, okay, I want to put these things in one turn and let in, the, in another. So you'll be negative log Ka plus negative log acid over base. On the left hand side, we know that is actually your definition of your pH, right? And then if you do the negative log of your Ka, this is actually the definition of your pKa. Okay, so if you expand this one, it will be pKa minus log, your acid concentration over your base concentration. And you got to these final equations that we are going to use over and over again in this chapter. This equation was actually derived by two scientists, okay, Henderson and then Hasselbrock. Okay, we are going to refer to this as HH equation. That is actually the equations that you need to memorize. Okay, so the HH equation is the most important equation for this chapter. Based on this equation, you can see that, okay, when you throw in an acid or base into a buffer, it's going to change its relative concentration between your weak S and weak base, right? So that they will actually eventually change your pH of your solution.